What's going on my peeps? Welcome back to the channel. I am super excited to jump into this one because as I mentioned last week, we're going to be picking up right where we left off and doing part two of Rie's favorite Japanese recipes. On the menu today for our main course is going to be a yakisoba savory pancake okonomiyaki. And then unfortunately for dessert, another iteration of the jiggly Japanese cheesecake. If you missed last week's video where I did all those other amazing Japanese recipes, I'll leave the link to that one down in the description so you can go watch it after. But let's get right into this one. If you'd like to make this at home along with me, grab yourself some all-purpose flour and bean sprouts, some bonito flakes and bonito powder, tempura bits and kewpie mayonnaise, mirin and okonomi sauce, thin sliced bacon, some water, some scallions, an egg, yakisoba noodles, and green cabbage. One of my favorite things that's come of me doing all these videos over the years is how many new recipes I've been able to learn and experiment with and taste that normally I wouldn't be able to. And this one is no exception. It's got a really nice mix of familiar and unfamiliar ingredients. For example, I've never cooked with okonomi sauce or these bonito flakes, which if you didn't know is just razor thinly sliced fermented and dried fish normally some kind of tuna. If I had found these bonito flakes a week earlier, I could have used them for that dashi broth that we turned into miso soup. But I'm sure there will be a next time, so I got all that prepped up. I whipped together my savory pancake mix, which was just flour, water, and mirin. And with that, we can move on over to the flat top where everything else is gonna come together. There's a lot of steps here. There's a lot of like going back and forth and trying to time things out based on how long it needs to cook, so. Bear with me with the camera and stuff. You start by layering up your first few ingredients on that pancake base before topping it with bacon and some more mix, flipping it over and then heating up your noodles. Shout out to my friend Chris, by the way, for allowing me to use this flat top because I'm sure you could try to do this in a couple different nonstick pans, but this, I imagine, is a heck of a lot easier. Although, <laughs> I don't know how much of a difference it would have made on this first attempt either way because this was a bit of a mess. Rie makes this look so damn easy in that video, flipping it over, flipping it back and forth without all your stuff flying out the sides. It is not, trust me when I tell you. Just like with the tamagoyaki egg last week, I figured I'd finish this first attempt and, and get a full round of practicing through. Uh, but with the second one, I was gonna try to really nail it down. And by the way, before I forget, before you all go running down to the comments about me using this metal spatula, uh, I'm barely touching the surface of this, and it's one of the only spatulas I have that's big enough to flip this entire thing, so relax yourselves. Plus, like I said, it's not even mine. It's my friend Chris's, so whatever. <laughs> I would say the second attempt was like moderately better. I kept trying to push it back together after each flip, but it's really hard. <laughs> This thing gets topped off with a fried egg and some more of our okonomi sauce spread out nice and evenly across the top. Some kewpie mayonnaise, and if you look really closely, weirdly moving bonito flakes. I saw this in the video and, and brushed it off, but seeing it in person is slightly unsettling, but let's give it a try anyway. By the way, I saw some of your comments last week. No, I do not have some type of nail disease, uh, and this is not nail polish. I smashed them in a garage door a few months ago, one night when I was very tired. I don't really know what to make of this one though. If you just put this in front of my face with my eyes closed, I, I could not tell you what this was based on the smell. The bonito flakes are the strongest odor coming off. It's, they're very fishy. Um, but I also get a real like barbecue-y smell from that okonomi sauce, so we'll see. That was just the biggest mind scramble of flavors and textures I've never experienced before, I don't think, so hold on. So the sauce is closest to a barbecue sauce, as I mentioned. It's got that same sweetness of almost like a brown sugary molasses type deal, um, but you could tell there's something else going on, something earthy. That's probably from the, the vegetables or, or something else they put in there. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know that one of my biggest issues with some foods is when bacon isn't cooked very well and it's just like super gelatinous and raw feeling still, and that's the case with this. To be expected, 
because there's only so much cooking you can get done on that one side. Other than that though, I'm enjoying everything here. The, the crunchy tempura bits, the cabbage, it's a savory pancake with egg and like sauces, mayo, barbecue, it's, it's pretty good. I think it just took me a minute to process everything I was eating, but overall I'd give it like a 7.4 out of 10. Next up, we've got Rie's super simple looking jiggly Japanese cheesecake made in a rice cooker. And for that, I grabbed some pancake mix and heavy cream, granulated sugar and powdered sugar, a stick of butter, a block of cream cheese, and two eggs. I started by separating two of my eggs. We're going to use both of the egg whites and the egg yolks for this. And because it's me you're dealing with, of course, I have to break an obligatory egg yolk and waste a third egg. And then to the egg yolks, we're going to add our cream cheese. I know what some of you might be thinking. Uh, why is he just talking about and then using cream cheese like nothing, like nothing's ever happened, guys? I think we're getting older, it's time to move on, it's time to progress and grow. Worst case scenario, I am the editor of these videos, so if any block of cream cheese decides to mouth off in the future, all I'd have to do is this, and then that, and then this. Anyways, let's finish getting together our egg yolks, vomit cream, and pancake mix, preferably without this happening. Okay. My kitchen supplies have been dropping like flies recently, one after the other. And I'm now also in the market for a new sifter as well. Um, so my main problem with Jiggly Japanese cheesecakes in the past was that they're very egg forward. If I remember correctly, I don't think I loved any of the iterations that I've ever made. It kind of just tastes like lightly sweetened cooked fluffy eggs. I certainly would rather have something taste like eggs than any American cheesecake where they just dump blocks of cream cheese and a little sugar and vanilla and egg in a pan and cook it. I've said it a thousand times and I will say it a thousand more. I don't know who invented it. I don't know why everyone pretends like it's this delicious creation. American cheesecake is vile, end of discussion. For this version, we're going to be whipping up the egg whites separately and then carefully folding them into our flour and egg yolk mixture before buttering up the pan of our rice cooker and then loading it in to let it cook for about 70 minutes. I realize that every rice cooker is different and depending on which settings that you choose, it can mess things up even more. But after 70 minutes, this was still raw. After about 80 minutes, it was also not very cooked looking. I honestly ended up losing count, but it was well over an hour and a half until this thing looked set enough to be able to flip out onto a plate. I let it cool before sprinkling on some powdered sugar and it looks okay. I wish I can procrastinate for even longer, but I guess it's time to give it a try. In my head, there was no way that this wasn't cooked all the way because of how much time it's been in that rice cooker. But when I was cutting it, it was pretty wet. Um, and it doesn't really jiggle a whole lot either. Let's see the moment of truth. So right off the bat, I like how it doesn't just hit you straight in the face with eggs. Uh, like some of the other jiggly cheesecakes have done. Um, I don't love the texture. It's very reminiscent of a Trace Lay cheesecake, but even more like wet and soggy if that's possible. That could be because it's still undercooked and I just don't know my rice cooker. It, it's possible. I'm sure this is just me and my hypersensitivity to cream cheese, but you can just barely get the like tangy, in my case, off-putting aftertaste right at the very end. It's not terrible. And I did eat more than I thought I would. I'll give it that. It was super simple and easy to do, but it might have to be just another chapter in the cream cheese diaries. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a big old like. Uh, I'm gonna do something that I've done in the past, and I'm gonna let you guys comment on this video, whatever you want me to do next week. And literally, whichever comment has the most likes is the one I will do, regardless of ingredients or price within reason. Um, so like each other's comments to which recipes you want to see. Follow me over on Twitter and Instagram if you do not already. And other than that, have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you right back here next time. Peace.
without the AD Put the burgers in my money, super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision